Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be taking you on a quick tour of my new bass boat. You already know what it is from the title and the thumbnail, but it's sitting out in the driveway. We're going to go take a quick look at it. We're going to walk you through everything that I set it up with, um, why I chose what I chose on it, and basically all the little features of it in case you're looking for a Phoenix 721 or any of the Phoenix boats. I'll walk through some of the uh, particular stuff that's like across all of the Phoenix boats. Uh, before we go out there, I have to say a huge thank you to Wheatus Marine. Uh, my friend Adam works down there. I ended up making the switch over. I learned on my last boat here. A couple of the biggest things is making sure you have the right boat for what you're trying to do. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that while we're out there. Um, I know I talked about downsizing, aluminum. There was a couple different paths that we were looking at. We'll let you know why I end up deciding with that boat out there once we get out there. Um, and then service and rigging is like the biggest thing. So I wanted to go somewhere that I can know I can trust what they're rigging, everything like that. Sometimes the smallest little details catch you more fish on the water or keep you on the water longer as I've learned over the past two years. Um, had so many boat issues and some stuff that uh, really didn't work out and caused me to not get enough videos filmed or fish tournaments not the way that I wanted to fish them and stuff like that. Um, so now we should have the ultimate fishing machine. We'll go over some of the rigging and why they did what they did, um, but they literally rig Jacob Wheeler's boat, Matt Becker's boat, a bunch of other pros boats. So they know what they're doing down there. They're very good with service, not to mention, um, I just got back from my Asia trip and I came home Easter weekend and they literally turned my boat around and rigged it for me Easter weekend so I could go pick it up so that I could go fish tomorrow, which is the following week. Uh, but they got it done for me so I can get back on the water and start filming videos for you guys. So they're great with service. They have tons of brands. They have tons of options, all different stuff from small aluminum boats all the way up to icons now. Um, so they sell a little bit of everything. If you're in the market for a boat, go ahead and check them out. Um, I'll leave their link down below. They'll probably have whatever option you could be looking for, used or new, uh, and they'll take care of you. If you go down there, stop and see Adam, let them know I sent you down there and they'll get you all hooked up. But for now, let's go take a look at the boat and talk about what we got, why we got it, and all the little details. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go ahead and walk through the boat here. We don't have the best filming conditions today, unfortunately. Um, it's partially sunny, but also overcast, so it's making it a little bit difficult to get good footage, but we got the 721 Pro XP here. Uh, a little bit about why we went with the 721. I was torn between a couple boats. I know we talked about aluminums. I was going to think about doing that. I talked about downsizing and trying to do like an 819 or something like that and really show you that you can get a boat build on a budget. Uh, but ultimately with some of the goals that I have coming up here on the channel of like I've talked about on some other videos potentially fishing the opens or getting back into tournaments again um, Also just for me to be able to fish Lake Erie and places like that and get those types of videos for you uh, I just felt that this was the best boat for what I was going to do And this was actually the boat that I ordered all the way back in July of last year when I was having issues And then I was deciding to keep my Ranger and then I decided I was going to switch again again uh, because I was actually in the process of building a house and didn't know if I was going to get a garage big enough to fit a 21 foot boat in it but I ended up getting a garage that's big enough um, we're four months away from our house being done so she'll have a home here very shortly uh, but that's why we went with this boat and we'll talk about electronics as well as you can see I got a lot of electronics on here I was talking about downsizing my electronics as well and the biggest reason that I didn't do that is from one comment, and I can't remember the na uh, name of the person that commented it, um, but basically the sum of the comment is, I can always do a video without electronics by just leaving the covers on the electronics and not turning them on, but if I didn't put those on there, then I wouldn't be able to do live scope videos, Hummingbird 360 videos, side scan videos, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so we loaded it out to make sure we can make all types of content no matter what could come our way and we are covered. So that's why we went with what we did on this boat. Um, but we'll go ahead and start in the back here. We got two power pole blades again. I got the anchor light on this. A lot of this stuff I ordered on it way back when I was still fishing the Toyota series and like going after that route rather than the YouTube only route, which is what I'm kind of going to focus on here recently. Um, but I got like the power pole light. I'll probably never use that because I never get out early enough anymore doing YouTube videos because you need sunlight to film. Uh, but I'll probably never use that until I get back into fishing tournaments, but I ordered it with it So that's what we had they have it bolted onto the jack plate here um, Like they do on any other boat. So we got the back brackets on here bolted up got dual power poles 
and the Mercury 250 Pro XS. Um, the only thing I'm thinking about doing is maybe changing these decals out for blue or even blacked out ones because I have a bright blue truck right there and then I have the black and the blue. It was a complete accident I ordered it that way. I just wanted black and blue and then my old truck actually, the check engine light came on and it couldn't get fixed so I ended up buying a blue truck but after I had already told Wheatus to sell this boat and then it came back and I ended up buying this boat again. Whole long story, pretty cool how it worked out but that's what happened there. Uh, and then we have the Atlas jack plate back here. Again, I wasn't going to run a jack plate, but I ordered it with it um, and it was sitting there with the jack plate on it. So I just left it on there. Um, we'll go around the front of the trailer here and cover all that in just a second. But the one thing I am going to cover from the outside is the battery box. So I have the battery box right here. I have a cover I'm about to put on this guy. Um, it came in the mail, but it'll start to like scratch your well here. If you don't put that on, it was like $50. I'd rather not scratch my fiberglass. So we're gonna get that put on there. It definitely needs to be detailed some, from all the rigging. Um, you get dust everywhere when you rig it. So I gotta go through and like detail it up. But there's these little snaps on the back. Those are for your cover so you can trailer it and it doesn't get the back flow. Uh, so the cover stays on a lot better. And then in here, I don't have this completely loaded out yet. So I will load out the boat today before we fish tomorrow but there are some compartments that have stuff in it so i have like my rope and an extra prop in here i absolutely love these things already um, i didn't have those on my last boat and it's so nice just having a little bit of extra storage in here um, but we'll get these out of the way so we can show you what's going on in this back compartment so i have two odyssey cranking batteries and then three uh, deep cycle trolling motor batteries. I didn't go with lithiums this time. I had too many issues with the lithiums and to be honest, those batteries are $100 for each of those. Uh, unless somebody wants to hook me up with some lithiums, those batteries were $100 and I can run three of them for 300 bucks and a single lithium is $1,000. So it would cost me 10 times the amount to put lithiums there. Uh, I could change my batteries once every 10 years and still get the life out of what three lithiums would cost across there that would last 10 years. So uh, I can make sure I always have fresh batteries in there and everything's working and they work really well. I had a lot of issues with my lithiums and didn't really like them too much. It might've just been the brand, but it is what it is. And then I have my power pole blade uh, pumps over there. And then on the far wall, you probably can't even see that cause it's too dark, but I have a five bank charger that charges all these at once. So I just plug in once right there and I charge all these batteries immediately. Those are straight for the trolling motor. And then the interesting part right here, this is for my cranking battery. So I run my big motor and all of my pumps and lights and everything else off of this battery right next to me here. And then this further battery over here is what runs all my fish finders. So all of my fish finders are hooked up to the E2 powering harness right over there. So I got a wiring harness back in here, uh, somewhere right about here where this little yellow thing is. There's a wiring harness there that goes up to all my electronics, runs to this battery right here. So I run my electronics off there and my motor independently off of this one. And then as the day goes on, if I start to lose power on my fish finders, or I lose power on my big motor battery and I can't get back, whichever one, I have a backup. I flip that red switch right there and it'll jump start off those two batteries and I can run either way and finish my day out using that right there. So that was super cool how they rigged that up. Um, gonna be super helpful when I'm out there on the water. It, almost always, you're eventually going to have technical issues. It's only a matter of time. Uh, so having a backup in place before those issues come to pass, um, can save you some time and heartache and headache out on the water. So that's why we rigged that up there. Let's head right up through the, tro or the trailer here. We'll finish that out and then we'll jump in the boat. But um, I got just the regular wheels on this because they're thicker. They're basically made for trailering. Um, I didn't get the big wheels to make it look fancy or anything like that. I would rather have my trailer tow really nice. I've had tons of blowouts over the years. Don't wanna have any blowouts on this boat. So uh, obviously you can't prevent that, but having those with the thicker sidewall tends to work out in the long run. I absolutely love how low this trailer is to the ground as well. Completely different from what my Ranger was before. My Ranger would sit like up here in the driveway 
and you'd have to like jump off of it. It was, it was crazy. And then they had the big bulky fenders. This is super low profile. I can get right up in the boat. Um, I can even, I couldn't do this before, but I can literally just reach in my boat. I can get all the way to my live wells without even having to step on the fenders. So uh, you can basically reach anything you need in the boat without having to jump up in it. And then we got dual brakes on the trailer because we live in Pennsylvania, so you have to have that. And then I got the paint over gator hide. Let me brighten this up so you can see a little bit. Uh, I got the paint over gator hide with the pinstripe there. I basically just did that for easier cleaning. The regular gator hide trailer over time uh, can fade or it absorbs, since it's like rigid, it'll absorb some of the dirt in there and it's harder to get off. This, I can just scrub it down and get it nice and clean. So um, I just did that so that it stays clean over time uh, and has a little bit of a protectant over it. And then the last thing up here, two things. Um, we got a keel guard up under there. Again, I'll brighten you up here so you can see. There's a keel guard right there that runs all the way back here, up to here, and then we got the blue bow wings. I thought those looked pretty cool. Keel guard's very important though, so anytime you wanna like beach it or anything like that, you don't have to worry about it. I fish by myself a lot, and sometimes the ramps aren't the best, so it's safer to just beach it than it is to tie it up. Um, so gotta have a keel guard on pretty much all of my boats. And then the last thing I got, I didn't order this, but the person that actually bought my boat and decided not to keep it um, and backed out on the deal added a trick step. So this is the boat effect step here. Never used one before. I wanted one, but I didn't want to pay for it. So we just kept it on there because it was already mounted on. I ended up kind of paying for it because that was already on there. So I just decided to leave that and we added the upgraded jack and winch too so that um, you can get a, a lot of our lakes are trolling motor only so it helps to be able to wind it up on there with that winch and uh, not break out your gears or anything like that but uh, the ladder will be super cool it helps me get around the graphs and stuff like that it'll help me load my boat up too um, but super excited about using that too not something i was looking to get but it's very convenient since i've had it so we'll go ahead and just step right up in the boat like that and then we'll start at the back here and go through all the compartments so the one nice thing that i loved about this phoenix so far is that piston right there um, the boats that I've had before have never had that piston there, so when you flip that open, it just slams off the sidewall and it would dent your fiberglass. Uh, so having that piston to hold that open is gonna be great. Huge compartment there. Uh, I got just my safety stuff in there for now, uh, but you can put a ton of stuff in there. And then the live wells, I was also super excited for six pumps between each live well, or between two live wells. So these are massive live wells for one. They fill up all the way up to the top up here. So this is 22 gallons, which my Ranger live well was 30 gallons for the whole thing. So each of these are 22 gallons total. Um, so 44 overall, and they're on separate systems. So I've fished co-angler tournaments before where guys are putting sunscreen on their hands, wiping it in the water, we're killing my fish. Don't have to worry about that anymore. They have their fish, you have your fish, you're good to go. Insulated lids is awesome, and then it has a pump in, a recirculate, and a pump out pump for everything. So you're covered, even if you have a pump go bad, you can swap pumps out to do different things, or you can just limp through the day with the pumps and fix them later. It's not just linked to one pump for the whole system. And then this compartment over here is an identical copy to that compartment that's over there. Again, spring on the side, which is awesome. Huge compartment, able to fit a ton of tackle in there. Uh, if you take a f uh, friend fishing or anything like that, you got plenty of room to be able to do what you need. And then those right there are very interesting. Those are air intakes that run with your pump. So as your pumps are working, that pulls air into the line and puts more oxygen in your water for your fish. So super cool there. Jumping back to the cockpit here, we have a whole bunch of stuff going on. First, we have the Phoenix seats, which I think are pretty cool. Um, they're very comfortable. Um, they look very minimalistic and that they wouldn't be very comfortable because they're pretty flat, but they actually kind of hug your body very nice and they're very comfortable. My friend has a, this exact same boat, so I fished out of this before I ever bought this, um, but they're awesome. These seats actually pull up, so if you need to clean your seats, you can just lift that up, clean it out in there, or adjust them if you need to. And then 
you can just put it right back into place when you're done and you're good. So um, no more getting stuff stuck under there and rotting and getting all gross. You can get into all the areas that you need to clean. And then in the middle, I have a slam latch on my center console and there's a ton of storage in there. I got all kinds of stuff and still plenty of room to put phone, wallet, keys, all that kind of stuff in there. And then to close it, just slam it down and you're good to go. This side, we have the passenger rod locker. I might put some extra rods in there that I might not use throughout the day, um, but that's a super cool Phoenix feature. Um, I thought that was awesome when I fished out of my buddy's boat as a co-angler, it's super effective. Um, and honestly, it works great because I could put rods in there and then leave rods on the side here and they're still not in the way because they lay right on that ramp, have the rod buckle to go over the side. Before I forget, your net also goes down in there. So that's an awesome feature. Literally my net is sitting right in there. I can drag it right out when I need it. Um, and it's always out of the way. It's not behind the seat getting water everywhere. It's not in one of your compartments getting all tossed around, anything like that. So that's a great place to have that. Have a cup holder and some other storage over here. See if I can get that there. There's a couple USB chargers right here when I need to charge cameras or anything like that. So that's gonna be super effective when I need to do that. Um, and then the Phoenix dash panel is awesome. Uh, you have your key, horn, all that kind of stuff. And then all your pumps, lights, interior lights, exterior lights, everything you need is right on here. And you can literally buy these extra switches. This comes off with like eight screws. You can pull the panel off and swap the switch out if something were to go bad. So it's very user friendly to be able to fix something on the water, which is very important with a boat. The more complicated the boat is on the dash panel or anywhere, um, the harder it is to fix something when something goes wrong. So very minimalistic, super user friendly. I learned that over the past couple years. Just keep it simple, fix stuff on the water, spend more time on the water, less time at the dealership. It helps in the long run. So we got that and right under the console there, there's a bus panel of all the, uh, the um, fuses and stuff. So if anything goes bad, you can just reset it right there. And then coming up to the console here, we have our Atlas jack plate gauge, the Phoenix steering wheel. Um, I have my power pull buttons right there. And then we have two Lowrance lives, or I'm sorry, we have, I actually did, do not have two Lowrance lives here. I have a Lowrance live here and a Lowrance Pro here. Uh, the reason I got the Pro, which I'll show you, I talked to the Lowrance guy about this. I have a friend that works for Lowrance and he teaches me all the different like functions and stuff like that. Um, the reason you get the Pro here is because it has the 1,075 kilohertz transducer with the chirp feature and everything like that. So your side scan is clearer, but if you put dual, you don't have to have two pros. So if you already have a live, you can just add the pro and the transducer and you can mirror these two off of each other and you can run dual side scan at 1000 kilohertz and have it split on the bottom screens like I've done in the past. Um, it gives you the clearest image. You can find tons of fish that way and it gives you 24 inches of side scan to use. I've talked about that before, but we'll be doing a ton of graphing videos this year. So don't worry too much about all the details there. We'll break that down as we get further into the season. Another thing that I love over here is these quick little access compartments. Um, so you can just flip them up. I got super glue, other little things, and then down below you can store other stuff underneath. Um, so it's super effective and helpful to have those as quick access anytime you're rigging up some tackle. And then the cooler is right there. Not a huge cooler, it's got a sandwich shelf and some storage. For me, it's gonna be fine for a day trip um, just to go out and film some YouTube videos, which is all I need. Um, but in the long run, if I'm gonna fish a tournament or with a co-angler or something like that, I'll probably bring my soft-sided Yeti and sit it right here. I've done that before. Um, I do have the hot foot under the console too. I don't know if I mentioned that. And then the tool holder right underneath the console is pretty neat too. They stay out of the way. You're never gonna get in the way of those and you can just grab them whenever you need to. Have your ruler right here whenever you need it so you don't have to go looking for it. It's very quick access. And then in the center here is your main storage compartment. So tons and tons of storage in here. Um, you got bungees, it's very deep. 
You can store Plano boxes all the way down in the bottom. It has the snake light uh, to look around if you need to in the morning. Again, I don't get out that early anymore, so I uh, probably won't be using the snake light a ton, but it has plenty of area to store all your tackle. We're gonna load this out today and see how much tackle I can hold in here, but awesome there. And then up here, I love this. It has the chip clips for quick access plastics, which I'm gonna use a ton. I hate having to dig through and look for different plastics. And then it has the foam keeper here. Um, so whenever you want to just stick a bait up there to dry, you can do that as well. And then right up in front, I never had this on a boat before, but it's a two part storage system. So I have the one here and the one there instead of one giant compartment. And I think this is so much nicer because I can leave this one closed and open this one up to get something out instead of having to crawl all the way up in there like I used to have to when I had one giant compartment. Haven't used it too much yet or at all, uh, but we'll see how I like that as the season goes. If I'd rather have one big compartment or the two smaller ones, we'll find out. Um, but it'll be interesting to know because Phoenix has both. So if you want a single compartment, you can get that. Or if you want the dual, you can get that too. Um, and then on this side is basically a rod locker. You can store whatever you want in here. Again, I got to detail this up a little bit, but we got my Garmin box right there, which we'll talk about in just a second. But that's my live scope box um, along with a bunch of my fuses for my electronics and everything like that right there. So everything's easy access. That especially is easy access because I had a ton of problems with my active target and my uh, box was underneath my triple mount up in the front, which is impossible to get to. So always mount it somewhere accessible. Right there is a great place. I could put rods in here if I want to. It's an exact replica of the other side, but it doesn't have the tubes. Um, or I could store whatever I really want in there. Uh, we'll see how I pack it out. If you'd want to see a video on how I pack this boat out, let me know down below. But we'll be getting to doing that today once I get all my tackle organized here after this. And then on this side is, like I said, exact dual replica. Um, I took the tubes out and I took the rack out in the back. Um, I might add it back later, but I took those out because I got way too many rods and they don't fit in there. So I run the six cents sleeves on them so I don't get the hooks stuck in them. I got bait wraps or if I got a rigs or anything in there. And then I got reel covers for all my reels so that I can literally just stack them all on top of each other. Nothing gets beat up um, and I can fit a ton of rods in there. So we'll find out how many I can fit in there, but that's how I'm gonna run that guy. And then the last piece of the boat is where all the fish catching gets done up here. Got the Lowrance Ghost 36 volt trolling motor. Same one I had before. I loved the Ghost, it was great. Um, I fished with my buddy's boat that has this same boat. His has an Altrex, I did not like it. I fished out of a buddy's boat that had a Skeeter with an Altrex, did not like it. So I've stuck with my Ghost. Uh, I like the way that that runs and I'm a Lowrance guy, so I can link my Ghost into my fish finders. I can drive it from the console on my trolling motor only lakes. So I, theoretically, I could side scan trolling motor only lakes because I can set that to go like two miles an hour and just side scan around. So that's why I went with the Ghost. And then you'll notice up here, we have something different this year. So um, did the triple mount again, the Bass Boat Technologies triple mount. We have my Lowrance to do my mapping back at the back. We have my Hummingbird to do my 360, which I've loved. I've caught a ton of fish off that. And we got Garmin LiveScope this year. So um, I know that the LiveScope Plus has been a game changer for some people. Um, I fished with a buddy that had LiveScope Plus when I had Active Target, and it was night and day difference. So we got the LiveScope Plus. The only regret I have about that one right there is I bought the UHD instead of the GPS map. So I can't screen record. So I'm going to have to find a way to hook up a GoPro somewhere in that triple mount and get it in front of the screen so that you guys can see what's going on and not be in the way of the screen for me to see. So I gotta play around with that a little bit. If you guys have any suggestions, let me know. I'd love to hear them uh, and see how we can potentially set up the Garmin there to be able to screen record. I uh, got my power pull foot switches right here. And then on the trolling motor, I have my 360 and my live scope transducer down at the front, but that's about it. Um, it's getting a little sunny here, so you're not gonna be able to see anything anymore. Like I said, we have terrible filming conditions today. Um, but that's the setup there. Uh, we'll be fishing with that and trying to do some filming on all the different graphs, how to do everything, uh, playing around with all that different stuff. We got live scope videos, we got Demiki rig videos, 
all kinds of crazy stuff coming. But in the very near future, literally tomorrow, we're gonna do a video on how to set up your Garmin Live Scope and get the perfect settings to get very clear images. Um, if you do enjoy some uh, electronics videos and you enjoyed this video and wanna learn more about some electronics, check out this video right here. I did a graphing video all about how to find fish, line up on them and catch them all in one video. And if you're looking for a boat, whether it's the Phoenix 721 or any boat that we just might carry go ahead and give them a check out down below hit the subscribe button while you're down there the description will have the link for we if you're looking for anything used new electronics rigging um, you don't even have to buy a boat from them they'll rig it however you want if you want to take it in there and have them rig something up like this to have you catching more fish so hope you guys enjoyed it hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching